Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Great to have you here today. Episode 3078 of the show, all about does fasting slow your metabolism? What I want to do is give you the actual results from clinical practice, share with you what we've seen inside of our practice with a lab test show, and then how you can use all those different nuances in order to make sure that not only can you incorporate intermittent fasting into your day, maybe even long fast, but actually boost your metabolism at the same time. So boosting your metabolism is not just about weight gain and weight loss. I just want to share that with you. Your metabolism really encompasses circulation in your body, your body's energy levels, uh, it's about your your uh, cold hands, cold feet, the skin tone, suppleness itself, and of course, your body's ability to burn body fat or store more body fat. So let's talk about that right now. Uh, the bottom line is this. So we're going to go into the nuances all show. But if you fast for too long for your body, especially at the wrong time of the day, and I'll share that with you. But if you fast for too long, what happens is in susceptible people, and unfortunately, it does happen to more women than it does men, you begin to lower your thyroid levels. And I just want to explain that really simple, but I have in-depth podcasts on it as well. So when you're fasting, it's a stress in the body. Just like a sauna would be, a cold plunge is another big stressor on the body, and fasting to a degree. And the reason why it can be a stressor is blood sugar levels could drop, especially if you're increasing activity. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So if your body doesn't have the fuel in, okay, glucose levels begin to drop. Your body then begins to surge more norepinephrine and cortisol in the bloodstream. And then what happens from there, especially when it happens chronically, your thyroid levels begin to lower. So TH levels, thyroid stimulating hormone can go higher, but your conversion to active T3, activated T3, if you don't know what that is, it's okay, you don't need to know what it is, but it's free T3, it's your body's ability to use thyroid hormone, and if you're suffering from symptoms of, let's just say thinning hair, cold hands, cold feet, dry skin, uh, thinning of the outer edge of the eyebrow, even the eyelashes, uh, what else could be, slow digestion, brain fog, uh, low mood, low energy, low libido, all of those things can be potential signs of a functionally slow thyroid. And that doesn't even mean that it's above a five on a TSH if you're testing your thyroid levels. If, you don't, if you've never tested your thyroid levels, I definitely recommend running the stress mood and metabolism test uh, by Equalife. You don't have to. You can always run you know, another lab uh, of your choice. You could run the thyroid panel. It's a little less expensive, but it doesn't show you your other hormones, but it's still amazing and obviously a much uh, less expensive price. Uh, and of course, you can work with an integrative health practitioner. But knowing your levels is really important. If you suspect this and you said, oh, I've got like three or four of those symptoms, you want to go deeper. You want to find that out. But could fasting be the reason? It, it can be. And the reason is, it's not always, but the reason is, is that when you increase stress on the body, the metabolism begins to slow. And here's why. If you are taking in too few calories and you're fasting longer, your body's going to say, okay, well, if I'm only going to get, let's say 1400 calories per day, but you're expending 1800 to let's say 2000 on a daily basis, your body's going to lower certain homeostatic metabolic uh, balancers. Basically, it's going to slow the amount of energy you exhaust during the day. So that's why when people, I've talked about this for many, many years, they go on a keto-based diet or really low-calorie diet, their metabolism just gets crushed. So they say, oh, it's great. I actually can get by on 1,300 calories a day now or 1,000 calories a day. That's not great. That means you've literally you know, sunk your metabolism. And that means now if you go above the 1,200 calories, you're going to start to gain weight. I did a previous show. I'll link this up as well. This is episode 3078. So stevencabral.com slash 3078. I went over the metabolic damage caused by reality TV shows like The Biggest Loser or even just diets and excessive exercise in that way. The individuals on the show never recovered in terms of their metabolism. Now they can. No, they can. But 
they weren't, they're not looking into integrative health, natural health. And it showed what happened to their metabolism, even when they started to come back off of the excessive exercise of many hours per day and the very uh, low calorie deprivation based diets. So that is one of the issues that can happen with fasting. Here's the good news. It doesn't happen over a couple days or even a week. What we've seen in our practice through tens of thousands of just thyroid tests is that it's usually 21 to 28 days. That's the minimum. And it's more like four to six weeks. So if you've done diets before and you see yourself start to plateau around four weeks in or six weeks in, oftentimes, if it's a calorie deprivation one, it could be a slowing of the thyroid. And so it's just, it's one angle, one thing, but I can tell you for sure, it's a big one. And so if you're doing a week-long fast, if you're doing a three-day fast, if you're doing a juice fast or a you know a functional medicine detox or any of those things, not going to slow your metabolism. It's just not. It's just too short, right? So it's yeah, it can be a stressor, but that's not necessarily going to lower your metabolic rate. And there are stressors are good. I'm not going to say that they're not. It's when they're when the body cannot compensate. That's when they're bad. Okay, here are some other times skipping breakfast chronically. Now, again, this is nuanced. If you skip breakfast once a week, maybe twice, that's usually for most people not going to be a big deal. Now, you don't need to, not necessarily huge health benefits. I do talk about a 24-hour fast uh, a couple times a month. So basically, it it could be even once a week if you wanted to. But oftentimes, I go from Sunday night to Monday night. And during that time, it's called my one day reset diet. You can check it out. It's all, this is all free to check out and, or it's just water. That's it. And then I have dinner that night with my family. So that's a, that's a once a week. Now, again, my body's healthy. All my levels are good. So I'm able to do that. And then once a quarter, I do a 72 hour, essentially liquid fast as part of the equal life functional medicine detox no issues with hormone levels. So that that's not a big thing. But if I were to, or most people were to, skip breakfast every day and you not eat that until noon, it is shown in the literature that not only does it increase all-cause mortality, but also causes a slowing of the metabolism. Here's where it gets even worse. Not only do, but this is why it's also covered up because you can still be losing weight. That's the scary part of this. So you still lose weight, but here's what they found. The majority of that for people that fasted till noon, skipping breakfast, it was actual muscle loss. So they lost some weight, gained a little bit of body fat, lost muscle. Now there are ways to mitigate that, which is amazing. Okay. So What they also found in a follow-up study was that if the individual, though, trained with weights, resistance, not even an amazing workout, they literally did like a machine circuit with weights, two to three times a week, they were then able to keep the weight loss, the majority of it, body fat. So it just goes to show you, though, how important weight training is for your metabolism. So in one scenario, person was losing muscle. Well, muscle is very metabolic, so that's what catches up. Uh, to you three to six months later. Oh, I can't eat as many calories or I gain body fat. Yes, because you lost muscle through dieting alone. That's why you really never want to diet without adding two to three days of weight training a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, even two days would work. Two good workouts, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, anything like that would totally work. Three would be better, but two is that minimum that enables you to keep your metabolism boosted. So even on a seven-day detox, again, it's only seven days. We're not talking about a chronic one. You could get in a workout on, let's say, day four and day seven. Like That would be totally fine if you didn't want to do the first couple of days because you were in a deeper state of autophagy and catabolism, et cetera. That's up to you. There's another nuance to this as well, and I've been going over this uh, term over the past couple of weeks in the show. It's called basal autophagy. Our bodies are actually meant to fast at a certain time during the day. This is, again, proven through the literature as well. We naturally increase autophagy at night. So as it starts to get dark, let's just call it six or seven o'clock at night. I know it's going to be seasonal. And then the sun rises again, six to seven in the morning. Our bodies are already equipped to be winding down, not eating, and actually going through, for lack of a better term, a cleansing process, okay? Where our body, hopefully, you probably 
hopefully, hopefully I'm saying this, taking a short walk after dinner, right? So your blood glucose levels don't get as high. You've had an easy to digest meal for the most part at dinner. By the time you go to bed, let's call it 10 o'clock, the food's already out of the stomach. It's in the intestines now. It's being broken down. A little less energy is being used for digestion. That energy now is being used for detoxification-based processes, your overall immune system, et cetera. Here's the nice thing. If your body is in a state of rest, relaxation, it can get deeper into autophagy, that specific type of cleanup. Why does this matter? Because our bodies are meant to be diurnal. So they're not meant to be eating right up until 10 o'clock at night, then going to bed or going to bed even later, and then sleeping through when the sun is rising, waking up at 10 o'clock or so, and then not eating for many hours after that. If you go back, our bodies are already pre-programmed to, if we were living outside, what would we be doing, right? We'd be waking up somewhere around when the sun is rising, We'd be going to bed a couple hours after sunset. That would be a normal routine. So for the most part, we would be eating during daylight hours. We would also be expending energy first thing in the morning. Mostly, I mean, we can't say for sure, and I don't want to say anybody knows for sure. You'd be eating things that you were, that you were able to store, that were easy to also grab, right? That you didn't have to cook or hunt or any of those things right away. Regardless of that, what I want to say is this. There is no need to create a larger stressor in the body by skipping breakfast. So if you are someone that's susceptible to lower thyroid or weight gain, lowered metabolism, et cetera, especially if you are a female, detrimental to create a stress in the morning, like let's just say it's literally commuting to work or the stress of uh, getting ready for work or taking kids to school, whatever it might be, like again, for any individual, you don't want to compound stress on top of stress. So there's nothing wrong with, let's say you wake up at 6 a.m., having breakfast at 8 a.m. There's literally nothing wrong with that. And you're going to take in the same amount of calories you would over three meals. So let's call it 8, 12, and 5, 30, or 6 at the latest. So if you're taking in the same amount of calories, you can't say that you're going to gain more weight if you have breakfast. It's just not the way that things work. So does fasting slow your metabolism? Yes, it does. But only chronic extended fasts on a near daily basis that lasts for more than typically 28 days, anywhere between four and six weeks. And when you check your thyroid levels, you can actually look for that. So if you suspect it, run, don't just run TSH, run your free T4, free T3, but also look at, am I exercising, weight training two to three times a week? Am I doing the things that would cause me to slow my metabolism in the first place? If you start to check off these boxes, you'll begin to understand that the body, when given the fuel that it needs, not just macronutrients, protein, carbs, and fat, but the vitamins and minerals and omegas and all those things, if it has the proper energy, it can give you that energy-based output, which is your metabolism. But if there's not enough energy coming in and you're always running on fumes because you're always fasting for too long, like a one meal a day based diet, it will eventually catch up with you. Not when you're in your 20s, not typically, but certainly later 30s and beyond. That's what we see in our practice every single day. Hopefully that this was helpful. If it was, of course, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. And for all the additional details, big takeaways and previous podcasts on this topic, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 3078 for today's show. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.